from Bilgehan Oztürk. He's a researcher at the Sita Foundation in Ankara. Good to have you with us this evening. Now, when Ulf Christensen came to office a couple of months ago, there was an understanding that his new government in Sweden would, would take the matter more seriously. And during a visit to Ankara, the Swedish PM said that he understood and respected Turkey's national security concerns. Does that put this into question? It is debatable, I mean, because uh, when Ulf Christensen came into power and we, we saw seriously um, changes uh, and positive changes in the attitude of Swedish governments in the case of, uh, in the, case of uh, the PKK or, or the Stockholm's attitude towards PKK, and the messages have been quite positive. So in that sense, uh, I believe uh, there was serious difference between the between the of Christensen government and and its predecessor uh, they are they are much more open to progressing in terms of their their commitments as a result of the trilateral memorandum uh, but now recently um, the mixed signals uh, signals are coming out of uh, the Swedish government uh, they 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 have been have been uh, you know serious in terms of their commitments they even passed certain certain laws to you know to crack down uh, further on on PKK or other terror groups activities on on Swedish soil, but the, as as with the recent um, statement by Ulf Christensen uh, at a think tank saying that um, although we are committed to Turkey's national security concerns, Turkey is asking for uh, things that we we cannot uh, we cannot um, meet the requirements. So I think. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to sound so speculative, but uh, when it comes to why PKK, uh, you know, undertook this uh, outrageous act in, in Stockholm, I think it was somehow uh, or to some extent encouraged by the latest um, attitude, latest attitude change uh, on the part of the Swedish government, because basically uh, I, I know that uh, the prime minister is a politician and he has to modify his message. Uh, to different audiences, but it was an un unfortunate statement, and I believe this was this was a source of encouragement uh, for for PKK terror group to undertake this kind of a provocative, uh, you know, act in Stockholm. So, do you think then that the way the Swedish government deals with the current situation is a case of, you know, not rocking the boat too much, or or is it a bad omen? We have to see. I mean, uh, this is an ongoing process. Uh, I am still optimistic uh, about Sweden's uh, prospective attitude and uh, and their performance uh, in, in in their commitment to to meeting the requirements uh, of Turkey's national security. Uh, and there have been there have been good signs, positive signs of this. But uh, there might be also some changes, some nuances uh, in terms of their calculation uh, on on their own national security. And, and and the threats that they they perceive from Russia, uh, you know, uh, we have to we have to admit that there is a there is a decrease, relative decrease in the perceived uh, threat uh, from Russian Federation to Sweden's to Sweden's national security. Uh, the level of threats uh, has been has been diminished, uh, you know, considerably since the, since the beginning of the war. So when Sweden uh, was in an urge to apply for for NATO membership. They were in much more, uh, you know, feeling of feeling of threat from Russia because at that time uh, the feeling that Russia was capable of military force, it was capable of not only uh, attacking Ukraine but also but also further further than Ukraine. So Sweden and Finland was within within range of uh, Russian Russian capabilities. Now it's, it might it might also uh, be playing. Uh, a role in the in the nuanced attitude uh, on the part of the Swedish government. Maybe uh, they are uh, they are in a view that uh, you know we are not we are not very much threatened by the Russian Federation. So we don't have to we don't have to meet all the requirements uh, of Turkey as of Turkey as demands. Maybe they maybe they feel like uh, they are in a in a better position to negotiate with Turkey, and maybe they will they will negotiate. Not to uh, meet all the demands by Turkey, and that might be that might be the reason why there is a relative complacency uh, in Stockholm, in Sweden, and maybe a relatively greater area of maneuver for PKK for PKK activities. 
And this, this has always been this way, by the way, make no mistake, uh, PKK has always been active in Stockholm and Sweden. But, uh, you know, uh, for, the, for the reason of Sweden's, uh, you know, intention to join NATO, there is a very, uh, you know, distinct likelihood that there will be certain crackdowns on PKK activities, activities. And because of this reason, PKK feels really threatened, uh, threatened by this. And, and this is leading them, urging them to act, act out. And what we are, what we are seeing, basically, uh, the result of that, the result of that, uh, you know, feeling. And unfortunately, these days, uh, it doesn't feel like Swedish government is in a is in a mood to fully uh, commit to their commit to their commitment uh, on the memorandum uh, that was signed in June in Madrid. All right, some analysis there from Billy Gahan, Oz Turk, a researcher at the CETA Foundation in Ankara. Thank you so much.